Hey, welcome. God bless you um, to uh, what we consider the noon and evening Wednesday Bible class here at the Little Missionary Baptist Church. Wow, how things have changed when we would teach and preach uh, to people at the class. Now we're trying to reach people who are in the class. Praise God. Hey, my name is Pastor James L. Hines of the Little Missionary Baptist Church. And thank you for once again allowing me to come in your hearts and mind. I want to talk about a, a text that I think it should be dear to all of us. I want to start with the Gospel of Mark, the 8th chapter, and about that 27th and 28th verse. And you are familiar with the story as soon as I pronounce it. Uh, when Jesus is coming to a place called Caesarea of Philippi, there he asked his disciples, whom do men say that I am? And they say, some say that thou art Elijah, some say you are John the Baptist, others say you one of the prophets. And then he says, but whom do you say I am? And uh, of course you all have heard that great mark of Peter, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus goes on in Matthews and says that flesh and blood didn't reveal this, but my father which is heaven. And so I want to say to you, uh, there are some things that can only be, be revealed to us by the spirit of God. And I want you to know that God is trying to reveal his identity daily and evolving in your life and in others daily. All of us trying to get to know Christ better but those who meet Christ through us is asking us, who is Christ? And so today I want to walk through uh, about eight examples of what we should know scriptorially about who Christ is. Um, there is um, an issue when the saints do not know how to explain Christ. And 1 Peter uh, 3 and 15 teaches us to be ready to give every man an answer. Uh, let's read that text, 1 Peter. But sanctify the Lord in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. In other words, um, be teachable, um, be respectful, and present what you know about Christ through the scripture and he says sanctify your hearts in other words when you put the word of God in your mind it'll sanctify you it'll clean you because it is a two head sword cutting going and coming yes the word of God is good for us and good for those that we meet when we let the word of God out of us onto those that we meet and remember the word of God is meek and it's holy. And so that's where we should treat the word with meekness and fear. You know, Ephesians teaches us speak the truth with love. A lot of times we know the truth, but it boils out of us in anger and it's delivered foul. You don't eat uh, bad food, do you? It's food, but if it's bad, you don't eat it. And so I say to you, learn how to carry the word of God in meekness. And so the scripture tells us to sanctify our hearts and be ready. We ought to be on the lookout to explain who God is. Not emotionally, not because of what he done for my mother or my father. We ought to be able to point to the scripture. And I want to raise some of those questions today and give you a scriptorial answer. One of the questions first, uh, <clears throat> did Jesus exist uh, before being conceived? Well, I want you to know, uh, Jesus is just like um, those preachers uh, that God has given according to his heart. You remember when the Holy Spirit spoke to Jeremiah, he says, I knew you before you was in the belly of your mother. In other words, uh, there are some people that God has an anointing on that they are conceived before their birth. You'll get that later. Here's Christ the incarnation of God himself on earth, it says in scripture, and I think we should go there, uh, Jesus got in trouble in John 8 and 56. And let us go to John 8 and 56. <clears throat> I have some people in the audience and they can follow along if they would like. Uh, 8 and 56. 
and it says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and you've seen Abraham. Well, they couldn't conceive that what was standing before them was before them. Y'all, did you hear what I says? And a lot of times, we can't always accept what God is doing right before us. And I want you to know, uh, you've got to uh, surrender yourself unto the mighty hand of God, so in due season, he'll exalt you. There's some things God's doing right in front of you, and you won't accept, like the Pharisees that, and the Jews that says, now wait a minute, uh, you're not even 50 years old. And some people cannot even hear or see and comprehend or understand what God is speaking to them or what God's saying to them. And so you can say to yourself, it's nothing new. This has been a trick of Satan in the past where he blinded the eyes and the minds and stopped the ears of those who saw him right up in front of them. They did not accept him and there are some people who won't accept us but let us be scriptorial sound that yeah he existed before being conceived. According to John um, 17 and 24 is another good scripture. John 17 and 24. Uh, it says uh, this 17 and 24 Father I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundations of the world. And Jesus is saying in his prayer, Lord, I thank you because you loved me even before the foundation of the world. I was with you. And so we have scriptorial evidence. Sometimes we have other believers that are not sound. And we've got to be able to give a word of endorsements to truth. To tell them, yes, he was here before the foundation of the world. Remember when he was praying and he said, Father, I thank you because you glorified me before the foundation of the world. Before heaven and earth was created, the Father and the Son was in existence. And so there's another question. Jesus was born of an earthly mother and a heavenly father. Uh, Luke 1, 34 and 35. Luke, first chapter, uh, 34th verse uh, answer that question scriptorial uh, was he born then Mary said to the an angel how can this be even Mary did not conceive or understand how can I get pregnant since I do not know a man and the angel answered and said to her the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God in other words, the angel explained to even Mary. And you've got to have a spirit of receiving when God is talking to you. Have mercy, God. Thank the Lord for that. Jesus was both God and the Son of God. According to John 1 and 1. It's always a, a favorite of mine, John 1 and 1. I've got it in my spirit. Uh, let us go there together. John 1 and 1. And it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In other words, he was saying Jesus is the Word. And he was with God, and he was God. Scriptorial, we can prove who he is, the Father and the Son is one. And so I say to you, uh, you've got to be assured of what been said to you and sometimes uh, that seems a little bit foggy but we can steady dig deep and go to Colossians 1 and 15 Colossians 1 and 15 praise God for the scripture Colossians 1 and 15 Philippians Colossians take a little bit to get them on stuff 15 and 1 he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Huh? He is the image of the invisible God. Have mercy, Lord. And then I just love what John 12 and 45 says, and I think we ought to go back there 
and read that and we will. John uh, 12 and 45 says this. Twelve and forty-five, and he who sees me sees him who sent me. And he was telling them, "If you see me, you see God. I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness." When you put your faith in Christ, God begins to illuminate stuff. You get to see things different. You get to receive things different. And so I say to you, uh, let God talk to you through the Scripture. The Son and the Father created all things. Genesis 1 and 26. Uh, let us make man was the inclusive verse. Uh, Colossians will go back and says, well, it seemed like he said, let us. And people saying, well, who's us? Well, Colossians 1 and 16, that's why we ought to know the word. Uh, to be able to console ourselves. Remember after Philippians, Colossians 1, 16 and 17, it says, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities of power, all things were created through him and for him. Listen, that's something I think we fail to forget. It was made for God. And sometimes we think it was made for us. And he is before all things. And in him all things consist. If you don't get in Christ, it won't last. And so I say to you, uh, get a scriptorial uh, base out of mind. Uh, one more thing I should conclude before we get out of here. Um, Jesus' name is like no other. If nothing else, uh, believe in the name and know that's the only way to get to the Father. Uh, many people have act like good deeds or good works. Uh, but Ephesians 2 and 8 says uh, not by works that any man should boast but by the grace of God but um, Acts 4 and 12 clears it up real good for the believers um, we don't go along says because we get along all of us going to be there no only those in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit uh, the apostolic church it says Jesus only and uh I won't wrestle with them. I think it's still a good premise. Um, I say, but the name of Jesus is so important. Acts 4 and 12 says, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The name of Jesus. And so I conclude with that evidence who do you say is? Tell them what the scripture says. The Bible says to all of us. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you. A reason of the hope that is in you with meekness. That salvation in you. That's your hope. It's in you. Be ready to give an answer. To every man. Sometimes people ask us questions. It appears as that they're challenging us. But they see something in us. They're just trying to grab hold. To what we have. I want to tell you be ready. Lead somebody from darkness. Into the marvelous light. Be able to explain. Salvation. Confess with thy mouth. Believe in thine heart. That God. Has raised Jesus. From the dead. And thou shall be saved. Have a scriptorial base. And then. When the Holy Spirit asks you. Whom do men say that I am. Surely we can all speak. Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. God bless you. I pray that you would. In, stay in tune with us. Sunday morning. Be in prayer with us. This coming Saturday. That the Lord's word will have free course. God bless you. Until then. Shalom.